Hello, I am going live as I record a little message that's just on my heart. So you can see that I'm on my microphone and I'm gonna try and put my phone because it's going live on Instagram on my telephone. So, uh, I don't know it's, if, if, if people want to join in and listen to this cute little message that I have, this little message that's on my heart, they certainly can. It's not that big of a deal. It's just something I was thinking about on this Saturday afternoon after the very first week back at school for us, we go back to school really early here in this part of California. There are some school districts around us that go back to school at a more traditional time, kind of like at the end of August. And to be honest, I think that's a more appropriate time, especially for the weather, because the weather out here in Southern California is so crazy hot. I mean, of course, right, as we went back to school this week in the basically first week of August was one of the hottest weeks of the year. Uh, we actually had to close our school down for inclement weather and have everyone stay inside yesterday. It was so bad. And I knew it was going to be because by the very, when school first started, it was already hot outside. So you know that when that happens, you're in for an extremely hot day. Nonetheless, we started school this week. And today is a day where I can just sit back and go, wow, this was a busy week. I have to tell you that I had such a busy week that my body was getting to the point of being way more tired than I even thought because I got home from work on Friday um, after my daughter's volleyball practice, laid down and fell asleep until about 9.30 at night. <laughs> and then when I woke up, I just was like, oh my gosh, I need to wake up. Thought, oh yeah, well, I'm gonna do some things tonight, no big deal. And no, I went downstairs, got a drink of water, came back upstairs, fell back to sleep and didn't wake up till the morning. So you know that you've been through a long week when that kind of thing happens. Has any of that happened to you guys ever where you're just so exhausted that you're done with it? Yeah, I think so. I see that um, a couple people have hopped on with me. Hi, you guys. Yes, I decided to hop on and go live. This Saturday, I my daughter had her friend over to spend the night. They had a wonderful time, but they even went to bed kind of early for a sleepover, if you ask me, because they had a long week, their very first week at high school. And then my, um, my brother-in-law came in from Tennessee and we were talking about family things and catching up about his kids. And then when my husband got back from working out, they went out to our pool and they're just out there relaxing. And I just thought, I just need to go live and also uh, talk to you guys about a quick message that's on my heart about what has happened in my life since Bella has been on her volleyball. Um, her, she just got on a new volleyball team. And I've been meaning to tell you guys this story. So Bella's gonna hear me tell this story live because it looks like she's hopped on. Um, it was probably about a month ago now when Bella tried out for her club team. Well, when she tried out for her club team, I, it's kind of a, the place that she goes to uh, do volleyball, there's like a balcony area that you can sit with the parents up way up high and then you're looking down on all of the courts, right? And then there's three courts, there's a court closer to you and then a middle one and then one far away. So where you're sitting on that balcony, you kind of have a bird's eye view. It's like everyone looks kind of small, right? And they're out there doing their volleyball thing. But you can't really hear anything except for people playing volleyball. And then there's a place that you can sit down on the floor where you can kind of really see what's going on, um, but you still can't really hear what's going on. So we went to her volleyball tryout and she played club volleyball last year and it was fun and it was great. But you know, even on the way there, I started to feel nervous. I could tell that Bella was a little nervous too, but she was handling it really well and I was really proud of her. But I decided in, as I walked in that I'm going to sit in a balcony. And usually I do not. Usually that's too far away from the action for me. I wanna be right there on the floor where I can watch what she's doing. But I chose to stay in the balcony and watch from um, up high and look down. And the real big reason why I did is because I, kind of didn't trust myself. I thought I might get too involved. I might actually get uh, to be that kind of mom that's more hurtful than helpful in that situation. 
And so I sat up at the top and I'm watching her try out. And as I do, I'm starting to feel that uncomfortable feeling like, oh my goodness, is my, are they seeing how skilled she is? is it, are they seeing how good she, my daughter is? You know, when you get as a parent, you're like, my daughter has skills. They need to see it. And I was getting so intense up there, but I kept myself up there and I did not go down to the court where I could stress out my daughter and bug her with all of my anxious energy. And as the, um, as the, uh, the tryout went on, I started convincing myself in my head. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know for sure if they're seeing everything she does and if she's going to get on the team that we would hope. And I think we need options. And I started looking around at all of the other places that might be doing volleyball uh, tryouts. Maybe what if she doesn't get on a great club team? I Maybe she, we want to go somewhere else. And I started just getting myself so worked up. But I stayed up in the balcony. And so my husband finally goes down and he goes down onto the floor. And he watched it from the floor and I watched it from the balcony. And the whole thing ended and I saw a lot of coaches around her taking notes and my anxiety was looked like it was way higher than hers was. But we got back in the car and we left that club, a uh, volleyball tryout. And I immediately was like, let's go to another trial. Let's do another trial just to be sure. I want you to have options. And I was just feeling eager. And my husband said, from my perspective, it looked different than where you were at. When you were up high on that balcony, you looked down, it looked like she maybe was doing well, maybe wasn't doing well, that there wasn't a lot of coaches looking at her. But from where I was at, there were a lot of coaches that were around her and looking at her and talking to her. And then my daughter talked to me about her perspective. And she was like, yeah, I felt like there were a lot of people that were uh, giving me encouragement and saying things that were positive. And so then I was just a nervous mess as a mom. I was like, oh, I just don't know if it went well. I don't know what's going to happen. And then later that night, I think it wasn't even that long. They didn't make us suffer very long, thank goodness. They called. Um, but that wasn't until after. I mean, I think I'm, I'm shortening the story. I mean, then I went in and I talked to Bella. And here's Bella. She's telling me, Mom, I feel really good about the tryout and I think whatever team I get on is the one that I'm meant to be on. I feel like I gave my all and in that moment I step back and listen to her and I'm like that's exactly the answer I would want her to give. That's exactly how I would want her to feel. So I just had to let my nerves go. I just had to let it all go and be like I'm being that mom. Thank goodness I decided to stay up in the balcony. I think that was the smartest thing that I did for that whole tryout is stay away from my daughter. Now, they called and the coach, I put this coach on speakerphone and the coach says she had an amazing tryout and we want to offer her to be on the national team and be our setter for the national team. And of course, Bella's excited. Of course, we accept. And we get off the phone and Richard's like, I, my husband's like, I told you that things were different from my perspective. And Bella said the same thing. And as I sat and ate dinner that night and reflected, I thought perspective is everything. It's like my perspective, my limited view from way up high and me letting myself get worked up on that perspective was not even close to what was actually happening. And then I, I, I know that the perspective from my husband, he said, you know, he had a completely different perspective. And I just, I feel like it's important for us to understand that in every given situation, what you're seeing and what you're actually going through in the given moment is your perspective. But it's so much more powerful if we're able to, which it's very hard. I mean, it was hard for me as a parent in that moment because our emotions are involved. But if we can step back, hi, Maddie, if we could step back and we can say, all right, this is just my perspective. I need to be able to see it from other people's eyes. I need to be able to understand that what I'm feeling right now is not might not be what I'm feeling even in an hour. It might be a completely different way that I feel in a couple of hours. Wouldn't it be powerful if us as parents could allow ourselves to calm down enough to not get too emotional when we're working with our kids? You know, a lot of times our kids are doing really tough things they're trying out for sports or they're trying out for, uh, it might be a, um, uh, a play 
or just even just going to school and navigating all of their teachers and their social world. And these things are so much tougher than what we might think. And from our perspective, we might get caught up with the things that we hope happen. And like I was thinking, oh, are they going to see all the skills that she had, even if they didn't see the skills? I have to say the year before that at the tryouts, she kind of freaked out. I did not stay in, I, I think I was in the balcony, but I was loud instead of quiet, which gets a good tip, be quiet. Just let your emotions be inside. Don't let them be too loud. It embarrasses your child. <laughs> um, I learned a lot of these things the hard way, people, trust me. So basically, um, when it came down to me realizing that things, can, things will happen as they're going to happen, whether they would have seen her skills or not, I'm still accountable for the way that I act and the kind of supportive parent that I am. And it's important that you kind of like remember that there's a, always a bigger picture involved. And I, I can put myself in that moment with the volleyball is that it was so much easier said than done. But there is, there's always something bigger happening. And your child isn't always going to uh, handle things well and you aren't and everything. But if you could step back and say, there's more than one perspective to this. There's more ways to look at this it will help us so much. And I learned probably more than Bella learned through going through her volleyball tryout of 2022 because I was able to have that perspective moment of saying what I saw up on the balcony looking down, all these little volleyball players playing and shooting and on these different courts was not even close to what was happening. My mind started speaking, figuring out a narrative and, and filling in the gaps of what I didn't see and what I didn't know. And it was filling in the gaps in a way that wasn't even helpful to Bella. It was like, oh no, I was out of fear. And I had to recognize in that moment that even as much as I tell you guys, don't parent out of fear, parent out of strength, parent out of seeing the best in your child, I'm liable to fall in the same exact areas when I'm in the moment and I'm stressed. Now, when we are feeling stressed and not dealing with things in the most positive way, it's also important for us to give ourselves grace and know that we're human and we can bounce back faster when we don't try and be like, but I had a reason why I did that. And I was, I was entitled. I need to be able to act like that. And just to say, you know what? It's tough being a parent. We don't always fall uh, and have our mind like go from A to B just right, but we can catch ourselves quicker. We can do what I did and listen to my daughter and realize that because I have raised my daughter in a way of, of being able to think through things, she was able to put in some of the practices of being a calm and confident person that she is. And she then turned around and was helping me. And that's the beautiful circle of life. If we're not too prideful and on our high horse and, and thinking that we're always right, then we'll be in the spot to listen to our daughter when they or your son when they have their act together maybe a little more than you do in the moment and i will never forget sitting by her bed and asking her questions and having her comfort me with the words that i normally comfort her with it was such a wonderful for full circle moment and i was so proud of her and i wasn't proud of her volleyball in that moment i was a proud of the person that she is and that is what's going to carry her on and on in her life. I mean, my oldest daughter used to be a synchronized swimmer. She has a synchronized swim now. It's the character that she learned while she was in that sport that matters. It's the person that she is today because of maybe some of the things that she learned about not giving up. And then she was able to not give up in her a, a life as an adult, getting through college and that kind of thing. It's the character that really matters. And I, I will always remember that whole process. I mean, I'm excited about her being in volleyball, of course. I love watching her play volleyball. It's actually really super fun. You guys know that about how much I post it on all of my social media. You um, hop on Instagram on any given night that I'm watching a uh, practice and I'm like, oh, there she is, ooh. <laughs> but at the end of the day though, I'm more proud of the, the person that she is becoming and is she going to be perfect? No, we, none of us are. But the person that she is becoming is 
is the person that we need to be thinking about. And that's also a lesson of saying that believe that they're becoming the person that they're meant to be. Believe in that each and every day, even if you're not seeing it in the moment. Um, you know, I also kind of think that uh, later on, it was like, I think it was the next day. Um, yeah, it was the next day. I was talking to all the other parents that were also in that same tryout, and we were all coming back because they, after they got on the team, they wanted the girls to play together. And as I'm talking to the parents, we're sharing stories, and they were all going through the same thing I was. Every single one of them, you wouldn't have known it by them sitting there and chatting and talking. You wouldn't know it. But the honest truth is each one of them had similar stories that I do. And I'm listening to them share about, um, and some of them, I'm like, well, my goodness gracious, I actually did pretty well then. <laughs> some of them are talking about how, you know, they just fell into having cussing in the car and freaking out because they were a little bit late. And one of them was talking about how intense they felt when they were at home. And another parent was being honest to say, you know, I, I was a nervous wreck. And then there was one parent that said, well, the reason we get like this is because this affects our life too. We're the ones that pay the money for this and take them to their practices and spend all of our time watching them and, and you know, have put in the energy to raise them to this point, go and practice with them, take them to open gym. And I was like, you know what? That's true. We are emotionally and also with our intentions and our actions, we are involved. If you're an involved parent that helps your child get where they need to go, then it's even more so a reason why you need to give yourself grace. If you're emotionally attached and maybe uh, have a moment that you freaked out or you're just too intense or you get in my place where you start writing a narrative that doesn't even exist, that is not even a positive one. And I had to be like, whoa, hold on here. No, <laughs> let's not do that. Let's, let's choose to say, why am I acting like this right now? It's because I am super emotionally involved. It's because this affects my life too. It affects my child, but it also affects me because I'm the one that drives to the practices and I'm the one that pays for this, right? So it's okay for us to have that moment as well. It was kind of therapeutic actually to sit and talk to all those parents and realize that we're all in this together. What they went through is very similar to what I went through when we're going through a time when our child's about to do something new, when our child is on the line. It feels like us. In fact, sometimes as a parent, I don't know about you guys, but it actually feels more intense than when we were doing it as, as when we were young and maybe we were trying out for the clubs and teams that we were on. It feels more intense being on the other side, being the parent watching. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I hope that some of you guys have can identify with this story that of what I went through with this volleyball tryout, the ups and the downs and the emotions. And I think the message I really want to give you guys today is just to say that um, as you give yourselves grace, as you parent, remember that your perspective can be, can be kind of altered by a lot of different things. Remember to step back and look at the full perspective if possible. Listen to other people. I had to listen to my husband to be like, oh, he saw this from a different perspective. Listen to it from the perspective of your child and choose to be a person that knows that we don't know it all. In the moment, our emotions might be getting the best of us. So step back and uh, as much as possible in these weeks to come and uh, remember that perspective is everything. Um, I hope to remember that. I know that in my first week of counseling, I gotta get going here pretty soon. We're on like almost 20 minutes of talking. Thank you for you guys that are here. And I'm glad that you're here to listen to this message with me today. I hope you're having an amazing weekend. I hope you find time to relax. That's a big one, right? Um, but remember that as I was counseling, oh, I was going to tell you, I had a parent that called me and she said, I am so, I, I'm embarrassed for myself. I just feel like I've, I've messed up already. 
I'm like thinking, it's the second day of school. How can you mess it up that badly? And she said, I called the office and I told them they needed to change teachers and I needed her to get a brand new teacher. And I don't even know why I did it, but I just had to intervene because she was so upset when she didn't get in, in the classroom with her friend. And her daughter had is, was in fifth grade and was telling her, this is the only friend I have. Now I'm not in, in the class with her. I don't know anybody in this class. Now, Chances are, if your child is venting to you about a classroom that they're getting in, if you've already started school or you're going to, if they say they don't know anybody in the class, that they're not gonna have any friends, that they will be complete, all of these absolutes that they throw out, it makes a parent feel like, oh my gosh, they're not gonna have any friends, I need to help, I need to jump in, but really, Kids talk like that sometimes. They say they don't have any friends. It's not actually the case that they don't have any friends. Many times I'll walk in, I'll watch a child play an entire game of handball where kids were high-fiving them. Another kid was talking to them for a while and they had a long conversation. And this is the same child that has gone home and said, I don't have any friends. It's really their way of, of just, they need to vent. They need to share, and if they feel lonely a lot of the day, it might be that they need you to help them with perspective. It might be that you need to help them say, really, so all day, all day, was there any time of the day? Well, you know, there was that one time when that one friend talked to me. Well, who's that friend? You know, instead of us getting worked up in our brain saying, oh my gosh, they have no friends. Sometimes it's our job to step back and say, well, maybe I can help them with their perspective. Maybe they feel lonely and they're saying they have no friends. Um, when really they need some perspective. It happens. So this mom said, I screwed it all up. I went and I had them try to change the teacher and they wouldn't change the teacher and now I'm so stressed. And I said, well, why don't I go check and check in on your daughter for you? And so I checked in on her and she sat down and she said, well, I thought I was gonna get a strict teacher, but I don't. I have the teacher that's the least strict and she's really cool and I really like her and I'm so glad that they didn't change my class when my mom called and then the next day my the mom left a message for me I naturally get to talk to her but she says my if, if anyone's talking about changing teachers don't she loves her teacher and she's totally fine with not being in her friend's class and I'm like well here it is again it got to her just like it gets to all of us she wanted to intervene she's like everything's not going right I need things to go better for my child and then she learned that, you know, she needed to step back and just let things happen. I've had to do that a lot when I've had my child at my own school and I want us to be able to do that as parents. Just take a step back and say every single thing that's being said is sometimes uh, a projection of our child's frustration. It might not be the full picture. Just support them, listen to them, hear them. Listening and hearing them go so much further than us intervening and trying to change everything. Because the things that are meant to be will be, and they will find the friends who believe that they can, believe that they'll get into the things they need to get into to grow, and that you'll be right there to support them along the way. And I just felt like, even though my goal is to do not so much this weekend. I still felt compelled to hop on here and go live real quick and talk to you guys. Um, those of you that are able to listen to the replay, however you guys are listening today, I hope that this message brings you a place of peace, that you can make your day amazing, that if you have any place in your life that you're uh, getting a little in your head, that you're rewriting a script that doesn't exist, that you can say, okay, I need to step back and have some real perspective, look at this in a different light, and choose to be a person that's moving forward in confidence and strength, being the person I, I really wanna be in my heart. And that's the best we can do. It's the best we can do for our kids. It's the best we can do for ourselves. And uh, I'm gonna get ready to go here. Oh my goodness gracious. Thank you to those that are here waving and saying hi. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you have, like I said, an amazing weekend. So until next time, keep in touch and take care. <laughs> Except I don't know how to go online. <laughs>